Mortal Kombat has come a very long way. What started as a small passion project for the geniuses John Tobias and Ed Boon is now a worldwide phenomenon. But with so many additions to the franchise, including the new Mortal Kombat 11 Aftermath update, the story is longer and even more confusing. And we're sure there are a bunch of y'all who are lost, but just need some clear guidance on how the story works. So this week on Honest Gaming History, as a last minute change from Doji, instead of covering Shang Tsung, we're covering the full MK story so far. Once again, don't see why you couldn't just stick with Shang Tsung. You know how well this lore gets. I mean, you right, but Aftermath got me all into the MK story. Plus, we were bound to make a lore video for the series sooner or later, so might as well educate the fam now. Yeah, but one Corner guy, bro. This video comes out tomorrow. You did just change the subject. <sighs> it's alright though. I'll get you back. Wait, what? Don't worry about it. Play that intro, son. So the Mortal Kombat lore begins with the one being, an omnipotent entity that took up all of reality. The Elder Gods didn't really vibe with this dude, so they waged war against the one being and created powerful weapons known as the Kami Dogo to shatter it. The one being's essence was used to create the realms we know today as Earth Realm, Nether Realm, Outworld, Chaos Realm, Order Realm, and Edenia. And the sick Kami Dogo that were created by the Elder Gods embodied the essence of these realms. As the Elder Gods ruled over the realms, one by the name of Shinnok let his greed for power overcome him and tried to control Earth Realm. But Raiden with the help of the Elder Gods beat him and he was banished Nether Realm. Over time, Outworld grew way too powerful. This was because somehow the essence of the One Being possessed the first known ruler of Outworld, Onaga, along with the conqueror that overthrew him, Shao Kahn. Both rulers were pressed on expanding Outworld by taking the other realms by force, so the Elder Gods created the Mortal Kombat tournament to give the realms a chance to defend themselves. In this tournament, the participating realms choose warriors to compete. If a realm gets 10 Ws in a row, then they're allowed to conquer the losing realm. Under the rule of Shao Kahn, Outworlds used their raw power to beat Adenia and conquer it. So the Elder God's safety measure only prolonged Outworld's conquest. These gods are freaking useless, I swear. The next realm on the Khan's conquest list is Earth Realm. For nine times straight, these guys beat dog shit out the place with their champion Shang Tsung. Then in a tournament that would decide the fate of Earth Realm, the Great Kung Lao takes the win over Outworld. But he gets beat by Outworld's new champion, Goro, in the next tournament. Then Goro proceeds to beat Earth Realm eight more times, so Earth Realm is once again in a corner. But this time, the realm's shitty ass protector, the Thunder God Raiden, chooses Liu Kang to join the tournament. Aye, conscience, maybe we should chill with the Raiden jokes. People are getting kind of butthurt. Man, look, I love the fam. You know I do. But nothing, and I mean nothing, will stop me from shitting on Raiden. Well, I then. So with Liu Kang as champion, Earth Realm beats Outworld twice, with our boy beating Goro, Shang Tsung, then Shao Kahn during the second tournament. But Shao Kahn ain't having that, so he invades Earth Realm anyways. Um, Elder Gods? With the help of warriors like Sonya, Jax, and obviously Liu Kang, Earth Realm defeats Shao Kahn again, and he retreats to Outworld. Then Indenia reclaims their freedom now that Shao Kahn is weak from getting his ass beat so much. But then, Shinnok is revived by the Nether Realm sorcerer Quan Chi, and y'all know how much he wants Earth Realm. So he starts by reconquering Adenia, which sucks since they just kind of got their lives back. Then he goes for Earth Realm. But the Fire Bruce Lee pulls through again and beats the former Elder God. Then the God gets rebanished to Nether Realm, and Raiden gets upgraded to Elder God status so he can be useless somewhere else. But as you can already tell, Earth Realm never stays safe for long. Quan Chi makes his return and discovers the legendary fallen army of the Dragon King Onaga. He's the guy that ran Outworld before Shao Kahn, in case you forgot. Quan Chi plans to revive this army to knock the Elder Gods down from their pedestal and conquer the realms. But the guy can't do it alone. He needs the help of someone just as evil as he is, and being able to manipulate souls would help too. So he enlists the help of Shang Tsung, and they form the Deadly Alliance. Before they embark on their quest to seize all the realms, they gotta get rid of the two people who can stop them. They start by seemingly murdering Shao Kahn, then jump Liu Kang and snap his neck. With everything important out their way, they return to Outworld and begin to use the souls of fallen warriors to revive Onaga's army. But they forgot about Raiden. He drops his Elder God status to gather as many defenders of Earthworm as he can to stop Shang Tsung and Quan Chi. But this useless ass god dropped his status for absolutely no reason. Earthworm's forces got overwhelmed and killed. The only being left to stop the revival of Onaga's army is Raiden. So Raiden tries to pull a last ditch play by taking on both Quan Chi and Shang Tsung, but they beat him. So this man not only got everyone into a losing play, but he couldn't even pull through in the end? Useless, son. With Raiden defeated, Shang Tsung and Quan Chi fight each other because they're evil. Quan Chi defeats a shapeshifter, but then Onaga comes marching in like, what the hell are y'all doing in my house? Shang Tsung gets up, sees the Dragon King, and immediately attacks the thing with Quan Chi. Raiden regains consciousness too, and joins the two sorcerers in their fight against Onaga, but they're not even doing chip damage, bro. So Raiden summons all the energy he has left to try and kill Onaga, but does nothing but take out Quan Chi and Shang Tsung. 
So Onaga's alive, and since the one being is still within him, he plans on getting all six of the Kamidogo to remake the realms in his own image. Alright, so a bunch of years before this, a spirit named Damshi came to the warrior Shujinko and gave him the task collecting all six Kamidogo. Now, because the spirit claimed to be an agent of the Elder Gods, Shujinko was out here thinking that he was doing something for the greater good, but the spirit was actually Onaga in disguise. So Onaga takes the Kamidogo from the foolish Shujinko and returns to the Outworld to reconquer his realm. Oh, and y'all remember that useless suicide attack Raiden did? Yeah, he revived from it, but he's corrupted now. So the first thing he does is revive Liu Kang and send him out on a rampage. So you watch this man die as an elder god, which I guess you couldn't really help, but now you turn Liu Kang into this? Raiden, stop doing things. With most of Earth Realm's defenders dead, there's not much that can be done about Onaga. But this time, the savior of the realms will be Shujinko. The journey he went on to retrieve the Kamidogo basically made him broken. So after recruiting some help, he shattered the Kamidogo and defeated Onaga. Well, good shit, Shujinko. You caused a problem and immediately solved it. Damn, you know who could really learn from that? Bitch ass Raiden. Damn, bro, you're really letting it all out today, huh? I mean, we're doing the whole Mortal Kombat timeline here, bro. Everyone's about to see how you be messing up. Okay, but do you have to keep reminding the audience about how much you hate this man? Yes. Yes, I do. Anyways, with Onaga defeated, Earth Realm is once again safe. Until the NRS team read over the MK plot and was like, where the hell are we going with this? Then we got Armageddon, an event where pretty much the whole MK cast killed each other off. The only people left were Raiden and Shao Kahn. Apparently the Shao Kahn that Shang Tsung and Quan Chi killed was a clone. So Shao Kahn is currently beating the god out of Raiden, and it looks like all hope is lost. Until Raiden has an epiphany since I mentioned to himself in the past saying he must win. Thus giving Raiden a redo at this whole protecting Earth Realm thing. And also giving NRS another chance to make this story fire. This brings us to the rebooted timeline starting with Mortal Kombat 9. We're brought back to the first Mortal Kombat tournament that Liu Kang participated in. Reboot Raiden got hit by the message of his future self and begins his quest to try and fix everything, but actually mess everything up. I mean, he didn't mess everything up. He did sub get things here and there. Fine, messed almost everything up. So the MK tournament goes on on the last timeline. Everyone's here for their own reasons. You have Sonya Blade trying to save her commander, Jax Briggs. There's Scorpion looking to kill the first Sub-Zero, Bihan, for killing him and his clan. Then there's people like Johnny who's only here to flex. Just like before, Liu Kang was a tournament by beating Goro then Shang Tsung. But the timeline still ain't fixed yet. Raiden lets it go for now and celebrates Earth Realm's victory with his allies at the Wuxi Academy. At the celebration, Shang Tsung shows up with an invitation to another Mortal Kombat tournament, where the boss this time will be Shao Kahn. He kind of forces them to accept, then Raiden and the gang head to Outworld. And this is where Raiden starts messing up. So for one, Smoke and Kwai Liang, the second Sub-Zero, show up to this tournament looking for Scorpion since he killed the first Sub-Zero, Kwai Liang's older brother. The Lin Kuei are starting something called the Cyber Initiative. It's basically the thing where they turn a bunch of their assassins into cyborgs. It kind of sucks if you want to do anything but be a weapon. So Smoke gets caught by the new Cyber Lin Kuei and Raiden saves him, which sounds good, right? But that leads to Sub-Zero getting taken and turned into a cyborg instead. Sub-Zero! Now tell me folks, who would you rather have? A cyber smoke or a cyber freaking Sub-Zero? Man, you're really- Then, after that mess, Raiden confronts Katana and tells her that he should go digging in her father, Shao Kahn's business to find out the truth about her past. Now I understand that it's good for Katana to find out about her past and all, but why would you tell this girl to go meddle with that tyrant? You know what that man is capable of, Raiden? So Katana does what Raiden tells her and she finds out that her dad is actually not her real father. He killed her father, married her mom, adopted her, they made a clone of her mixed with Tarkatan DNA. This clone is Melina, by the way. Then because Shao Kahn is Shao Kahn, he imprisons her. So Liu Kang, being Katana's love interest, goes to rescue her. And Raiden uses this chance to tell Liu Kang's friend Kung Lao that maybe this means that he must win. And that decision leads to Kung Lao going into a battle that he wasn't supposed to and getting his neck snapped by Shao Kahn right after. Fuck ups all across the board, my guy. Are, are you done? Ah, <sighs> yeah, yeah, I need that. M may I speak now? Hold on. Ow, what the fuck? That's what you get for changing the topic at the last minute. Bitch, asshole. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Continue the story. So Lu punches a hole through Shao Kahn for killing his best friend, and that was in the tournament. But just like before, Shao Kahn's like, fuck the rules, and invades Earth Realm anyways. And guess what the other gods do? Nothing. So the invasion happens, and thanks to the arrival of Shao Kahn's late wife and mother of Katana, Zendel, a bunch of Earth Realmers die, including Jax, Smoke, and Katana's old friend Jade. Raiden pleads to the Elder Gods for help, and they obviously tell him to kick rocks. Then after Liu Kang leaves him out of anger for all the screw-ups he's caused, the dude tries to ask Quan Chi for help. Quan Chi! You see how low you have to stoop when you're garbage? Quan Chi shits on him too, then Raiden has an epiphany. He must win means that Shao Kahn has to win. If he enters Earth Realm, then the Elder Gods have to do something about it. But with the Elder Gods track record, this is a pretty risky gamble. And Liu Kang figures that too, because when Raiden tells him the master plan, Kang's like, are you out of your goddamn mind? So they fight about it, and Raiden accidentally kills Earth Realm's true protector. I don't think y'all are ready for another Raiden rant, so I'm gonna just leave you with this. Fuck Raiden, son. So Shao Kahn appears in Earth Realm after this like, whoa, what did I miss? Then he proceeds to beat dog shit out the Thunder God. But luckily the Elder Gods actually do something this time. 
I know Raiden was like, whoo, I did thought they were gonna let this man kill me. So thanks to the Elder Gods, Shao Kahn gets got and the Earth Learners relax for a bit. But sadly, Quan Chi was in the background playing to summon Shinnok this whole time. And what really sucks is that he controls the revenant forms of all the warriors who were killed in MK9. So Liu Kang, Kung Lao, Katana, Sub-Zero, yeah, all those guys and more are under Quan Chi's control right now. So Shinnok gets revived and he initiates his plan of taking over Earth Realm with his nether realm forces. And he almost gets away with it too, if it wasn't for that meddling Johnny Cage and his broken ass green powers. And Johnny Cage also somehow beat Revenant Sub-Zero and Scorpion during this time. Don't know how that happened, but it did. Then after this, Johnny Cage and Sonya lead a strike on Quan Chi's base. In the process, Raiden is able to revive Jax, a now human Sub-Zero thanks to Quan Chi's magic and Scorpion. And Sonya literally busts Quan Chi's balls. It's hilarious. This moves us to the MKX comic series, where a bunch of important events happen. For one, Johnny Cage and Sonya Blade have their daughter Cassie Cage. She becomes best friend to Jack's daughter Jackie. Scorpion, who now goes by his real name Hanzo Asashi thanks to his revival, restores the Shira Ryu and trains a blind swordsman Kenshi's son Takeda. The death of Shao Kahn leads to Melina ruling Outworld, but she sucks balls at that, so a civil war breaks out, and the Ashtek Kotokan claims the Outworld throne. Sub Zero beats the Cyber Link Kuei and starts training warriors to form the new non Cyber Link Kuei. And though this wasn't in the comic, around this time Hanzo met with Sub Zero and he reveals that the massacre of Hanzo and his family was all part of Quan Chi's plot. So this brings an end to the ongoing feud between them, but now Hanzo really wants to kill Quan Chi. 25 years after that whole Netherrealm invasion, Johnny Cage creates a new team under the Special Forces. This team consists of his daughter Cassie, Jackie, Takeda, and Kung Lao's nephew, Kung Jin. And Melina is using Shinnok's amulet, the key to resummoning the Fallen Elder God, to try and take Outworld back from Kotal Kahn. Sonya and the rest of the Special Forces find out about this, and they send the new gen Earthrealm defenders to Outworld to retrieve the amulet. With the help of Kotal and his subjects, Melina dies from insect aids, and they get the amulet. But Kotal's like, psych, y'all would've thought, and captures them while keeping the amulet for himself. And it turns out the subject he interests to hold the amulet, Devorah, is actually working for Quan Chi and is on her way to hand it to him. Luckily, Sonya, Jackson, and the special forces are already on their way to the guy. They catch him slipping, but Hanzo shows up at the worst time ready to kill the dude to avenge his family. So Hanzo pushes his way through the good guys to get to the sorcerer, then gets his head ready for the choppy chop. But Devorah shows up and passes Quan Chi the amulet. And somehow, as Hanzo proceeds with the beheading, Quan Chi chants the spell required to summon Shinnok once again. Now awake, Shinnok heads to the Jinsei so he can proceed with his plan to corrupt it and take over Earth Realm. Borai Cho tries to stop him, but he gets bodied. Then when Raiden tries to stop him, Shinnok says the revenant forms of Katana, Smoke, Sindel, and yes, Kung Lao and Liu Kang too. Raiden handles everyone but his two former students first. Then they attack him out of anger for letting him die back in MK9. The 2v1 ends with Raiden victorious, but he's not in good shape after just getting jumped. So Shinnok holds him back, and he also has Johnny Cage hostage so he doesn't get hit by that green energy bullshit again. Luckily, Cassie and her team comes in clutch, and she makes it to Shinnok. She activates the same bullshit that her dad used, and beats the Elder God even though she's a freaking child. She's not a child, she's like in her 20s. Don't she? This man is an Elder God, and Cassie dead just got here. She's a child. So Shinnok is defeated, but he still managed to corrupt the Jinsei. So Raiden goes in and purifies the Jinsei, but he gets corrupted in the process. With Quan Chi dead and Shinnok defeated, Revenant Liu Kang and Katana decide to rule Netherrealm. Raiden pays the two a visit, and basically tells them that if they try to mess with Earthrealm, he will end them. Moving on to MK11, Raiden is seen torturing Shinnok, then since he can't kill him, he beheads him. After Raiden leaves his little torture chamber, the Titan of Time Kronika comes in basically revealing herself as the villain of the game. Moving on, Cassie Cage gets promoted to commander, then Dark Raiden shows up to warn them about Liu Kang's Netherrealm army. Raiden wants to attack Liu Kang now while they have the element of surprise. And against Johnny's better judgment, Sonya agrees to join Raiden on the mission. So Sonya, Cassie, Raiden, Jackie, and a bunch of foot soldiers storm Netherrealm. The attack is successful, with them taking the Netherrealm Cathedral, but Sonya dies in the process. Cassie and Johnny are obviously hurt by their loss, so Raiden decides to not help by telling them that she died as a warrior. Bro, my mom just died. Back in Netherrealm, Kronika appears to recruit Liu Kang and Katana in her mission to create a new era without Raiden. They happily accept, since they're sick of the Thunder God just like Kronika is. Meanwhile in Outworld, the execution of someone known as the Collector gets interrupted by a time quake caused by Kronika. Past versions of a bunch of characters show up in total confusion. One of these characters being past Raiden, so this causes present Raiden to kind of just leave existence. Another one of these characters being Shao Kahn, and he's not too happy about Kotal sitting on his throne. So he tries to attack the new Khan, but he fails and gets bodied. The Vor comes just in time to save him and his subordinates though. Afterwards, Raiden confronts Kotal Khan, and the Khan tells him that they were allies in the fight against Shinnok. But afterwards, he got corrupted and started wilding out on all the realms he deemed as threats. Raiden then assures him that that is not him, but y'all know Raiden by now. Sooner or later, he's gonna fuck up. Back to Shao Kahn and his people, Kronika reveals herself to them and recruits them into her no Raiden army. They accept because they're also on the fuck Raiden bandwagon. Now back to the special forces, they're trying to figure out why younger versions of Liu Kang, Kung Lao, Raiden, Jax, Sonya, and Johnny Cage are here. 
Raiden gets a quick summary of how his future turns out, and Liu Kang and Kung Lao are told that Raiden caused both their deaths. Oh, and younger Sonya was told that her future self literally just died, so that makes things awkward. Before they're able to really talk about all this time shit, Liu Kang and Kung Lao were tasked with defending the Wuxi Academy since it looks like Kronika's people are messing with shit. They run into Past Scorpion and Revenant Jade. Beat them both, they run into Kronika's lackey Garrus, trying to steal some of the Jinsei. Before getting to Garrus, he sends their Revenant forms with them to stall. The hatred they have for Raiden low-key makes them feel a little bit iffy about him. But they ain't got time for that right now because they have to deal with an immortal time warrior. They beat the Revenant forms and lunge at Garrus, but he stops time and dips, like a bitch. Nah, for real. Garrus literally does nothing but get beat, then revive until he gets the upper hand. But he still talks shit like he actually does shit. Fuck out of here, Garrus. So after this, Hanzo and Sub-Zero join forces in the team up of the century to put an end to the revival of Cyber Lin Kuei, since Kronika is trying to use him for her end raid and army. However, Kano, Aaron Black, and Future Kano use Sector's damage frame to create an army of Cyber Lin Kuei. Then even later, Kronika persuades Jax to join her cause. Jax, a good guy. All right, Jax, I get it. Your life's fucked up, some mummy dude took away your arms, and your wife is gone. But how are you just gonna switch sides like that? Especially when your daughter is still on the good side. Even if you don't know what's going on, look at this lady, son. Tell me she's not evil. Later, Raiden confronts the Elder Gods as he usually does, but finds a place in ruin with only one Elder God, Cetrion, waiting there. Cetrion reveals that Shinnok is her brother and Kronika is their mother. When Raiden chopped off Shinnok's head, he ruined the balance of light represented by Cetrion and darkness represented by Shinnok in the realms. Kronika didn't like that, so that's why she is now creating a new era without the Thunder God. All this might have been stopped if Raiden didn't wild out and chop off Shinnok's head? I mean, I guess, but what else is Raiden gonna do? Shinnok was dead a threat. He could have sealed them back in an amulet. Nobody told him to keep it for himself. Quan Chi was the only dude we know of that could summon Shinnok. And that dude got murdered. So if Raiden just locked the amulet away somewhere, we'd be chilling. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, you're right. Huh, <sighs> so Raiden's like, you won't get away with this, Cetrion. But Cetrion explains that Shao Kahn has captured both Jade and Kotal Kahn. So they kind of have the upper hand. Meanwhile, the reformed Cyberlink Kuei attacks a special forces base and kidnaps both Past Johnny and Sonya. After this happens, Raiden takes the rest of the heroes to the Shiaru Fire Gardens since it's the only safe place to plan their attack. The team knows they can't just leave Shao Kahn with Jade and Kotal, so Liu Kang and Kung Lao had to outworld them as this katana and overthrowing Shao Kahn, and taking the outworld throne as Katana Khan. Cassie goes to see the past versions of her mother and father, and both Kanos get murked in the process. Then Jackie goes with their father's past self to find Kronika's crown. They find it but get stopped by Present Jax. Remember that Present Jax works for Kronika now, so he wants him to give him the crown, but Past Jax can't have that, so he beats his present self's ass. But Cetrion shows up and snatches the crown and leaves with Present Day Jax, and he defends himself by saying that he's doing this for his daughter. My man is stupid. Afterwards, we get back to the God Tier duo, Hanzo and Sub Zero. They're trying to rescue someone by the name of Karan. With his fleet, they'll be able to get all their forces to Kronika's base for the final attack. Hanzo goes in alone and beats Dogshit out the Vora to get to the man. But then his past self shows up talking about how Kronika will revive the Shirai Ryu. But after beating him, Hanzo says that he already restored the clan, and Kronika's plan includes summoning Shinnok, who was the person responsible for killing their clan in the first place. After the clan's revival, he pledged to protect Earthrealm, and he believes that Past Scorpion should honor that pledge as well. As Past Scorpion inflicts on what Hanzo is saying, the Vora surprise attacks Hanzo and poisons him. Scorpion sides with Hanzo and saves him from Devorah, but it's too late. The poison is already doing its work. Hanzo tells Scorpion to enlist the aid of Karan and find Raiden at the Fire Garden. Scorpion gets the job done, but once he enters the Fire Garden, he is forced to defend himself against Sub-Zero, then Raiden. Raiden assumes that this dude is the bad guy and starts wilding out. Scorpion and eventually even Liu Kang try to convince him to chill. But no, Raiden does exactly what everyone told him not to do and starts using shit not to amulet on Scorpion. Bruh, but they told you. They dead told you not to do this, Raiden. What's wrong with you? So this leads to Liu Kang fighting Raiden in defense of Scorpion. Then Raiden realizes that they're falling into Kronika's plan. Kronika has restarted the timeline multiple times, and each time she pit Liu Kang and Raiden against each other. Oh, so it wasn't because Raiden is crazy. Kronika's just a bitch. Then as if on cue, Kronika pops in, touches shit to Raiden, and takes Liu Kang and tells Raiden to see her with the hands without his problem solver. So Raiden takes all of his allies along with Karan's fleet and guns it for Kronika's base. After bringing Jax back to the good side and throwing Garrus into the depths of the Sea of Blood, Raiden gets confronted by Revenant Liu Kang, who has just absorbed the soul of past Liu Kang. Raiden has learned from his mistakes, so instead of fighting Liu Kang, he chooses to save him by fusing with him and creating the fire god Liu Kang. Not gonna lie, this shit makes no sense, but it's type of shit, so I don't care. Then God Liu Kang bicycle kicks his way through everyone in his path and gets to the boss, Kronika. But Kronika bitches up and resets the timeline all the way back to the primordial age. So here one of three endings happen. In one, Kronika kills Liu Kang and begins a new era. In another, Liu Kang wins, Mortal Raiden somehow shows up and tells him that he is now worthy of being the protector of Earthrealm, then he begins a new era with his girl Katana. However, in the ending that we're focusing on, Liu Kang begins to reset the timeline with Raiden, but they get interrupted by Shang Tsung, Raiden's brother Fujin, and Nightwolf. These guys are trapped in the void by Kronika, and watch everything that unfolded from the sidelines. Shang Tsung says that Liu Kang will be able to reset the timeline because he accidentally destroyed Kronika's crown when he defeated her. So the sorcerer proposes that he go to the past to retrieve the crown. But wait, 
They didn't chronicle reset the timeline. How do you now go to a timeline that no longer exists? Wouldn't that just be going to a parallel- Doji, you're asking way too many questions. Just turn off your brain and enjoy the hype. Anyway, Shang Tsung is known for being a snake in the grass. So Raiden is super against this plan. However, Liu Kang has a plan, so they decide to let Shang Tsung carry out his plan with Fujin and Nightwolf. Plus, Shang Tsung apparently used to work for Kronika, so he should be able to get the upper hand on her. So the team has to the point in time where Katana fought her father for the throne of Outworld. Almost immediately after saying that they can't get caught by anyone because that would alter the timeline, they get caught by the Collector. Dumbasses, bro! They beat the dude, then agree to revive and enlist the help of Sindel, since she used to be a good guy, and she has nothing to do with what happened in the MK11 story. To get this done, though, they first head to the Jinsei to get some of Earthrealm's life juices. Then on their way to Netherrealm to revive Sindel, they get captured by Revenant Liu Kang. Revenant Sindel shows up along with Revenant Nightwolf, which makes her job a lot easier. Nightwolf frees himself and the team beats both Revenants. But in the process, Shang Tsung gets hurt badly, so Nightwolf reluctantly allows him to absorb the soul of his Revenant form. They grab Sindel and head to Outworld to enlist the help of Sindel's former bodyguard, Shiva. Once she joins their cause, they head to the soul chamber where they find Kotal Kahn healing from his spine injury from when he fought Shao Kahn. Just like everyone else who caught these guys, Kotal goes against them because Shang Tsung is on their team. So Shiva holds Kotal back so they can revive the former queen of Adenia. Once revived, Sindel and Katana have an emotional reunion. Then with the help of Sindel, the time seeming squad heads for Shang Tsung's island to retrieve Kronika's crown. They run into Jax and Noob, and after beating them, Fujin manages to help Jax see the light. On the way off the island with the crown, they run to Jackie and pass Jax. But they show that they're allies, and Jackie and the special forces actually believe them. Sindel then leaves for Outworld to assist Katana, and they all agree to reconvene at the Sea of Blood to attack Kronika. Oh yeah, and by this point, Kronika knows that Shang Tsung is interfering with the timeline, so she's planning on handling that ASAP. Moving on to the Fire Garden, back at the point at MK11 where Scorpion tries to join forces with the good guys, Shang Tsung appears before him in Sub-Zero. Just like all the other times, they fight merely because Shang Tsung is here. Fujin beats both the Spectre and the Ice Assassin, then they get confronted by Liu Kang and Raiden. Fujin explains the situation to them both, then Raiden wilds out as always, ignores their story, and pulls out Shinnok's amulet. My man, can you chill? So before Raiden starts to fight with Liu Kang again, Fujin beats some sense into his brother. Then Raiden admits that he was being stupid, and they team up. Kronika shows up, and reveals that Shang Tsung created the crown. Then when they refuse to hand it over, they use this Avatar-like team attack to force her to retreat. Now is when we start getting to the twist. Turns out Sindel is actually evil, and plans on reviving her husband, and ruling the new era with the help of Shang Tsung. So yes, people, unfortunately Shang Tsung did not turn a new leaf. He's still a fuck. And they made Sindel a bad guy in this timeline too, which honestly kind of sucks. So Sindel finds her former tyrant husband, but Shiva finds her comforting him. So Sindel beats Shiva to keep her mouth shut. Then when her people find Sindel standing over their leader's body, Sindel easily tricks these dumbasses into siding with her. Worst soldiers ever. Sindel revives Shao Kahn, and everything starts going to shit. They ambush the special forces, and young Johnny Cage watches as Sonya and Cassie get their asses handed to them. Then Johnny pulls the biggest flex ever, and tells Shao Kahn that he's about to give it to him. But he gets shut down, cause like, you don't just simply beat the leader of Outworld. Then the evil couple ambushes Liu Kang, Kung Lao, and Katana along with their people. They take down everyone one by one, even their own daughter Katana. Sindel even admits to killing her late husband because of his weakness, and choosing Shao Kahn cause he was powerful. So you're gonna choose this tyrant over your own daughter. Yeah, I hate this, Sindel. Luckily, while this is happening, Fujin, Raiden, Shang Tsung, the Special Forces, and Wuxi Academy monks made their way to Kronika's stronghold. As they attack the place, Shao Kahn and his people make the most savage entrance of a lifetime by entering the keep with Kotal's severed head. Then Shang Tsung pulls his final trap card and tricks Fujin into giving him the crown. The sorcerer puts it on and transforms into his younger self. Then he pretty much bodies everyone in his way and absorbs the souls of both Raiden and Fujin to stop them from interfering. Oh, shit. Yeah, that might be GG. Shao Kahn and his wife then join Shang Tsung to confront Kronika, but at the last minute, Shang Tsung betrays a couple and absorbs their souls. So with Shao Kahn and Sindel out of the picture, Shang Tsung proceeds to absorb the Titan's soul, thus finally giving him full control over time. Wait, can Shang Tsung even do that? How does one even absorb the soul of a Titan? Shouldn't Kronika be way stronger? Bro, this is Mortal Kombat. You know power scaling doesn't exist. So as Shang Tsung begins to create his new timeline, God Liu Kang confronts him. Apparently everything that happened was according to his plan. Liu Kang knew Shang Tsung would betray him, so he waited until this moment for the perfect chance to strike, just like any good earthbender. So technically, he low-key pulled the Raiden by sacrificing the lives of everyone for the greater good. I mean, yeah, but this is Liu Kang we're talking about, bruh. He's got this. Yeah, you're right, you're right. So here we get two endings. In the first one, Shang Tsung kills God Liu Kang, and it was over his new era with Fujin and Raiden as his subjects. In the relevant timeline though, Liu Kang beats dog shit the sorcerer, just like he did back in the first MK tournament, then resets the timeline. Then he introduces himself to the great Kung Lao, the original Earthrealm winner of the MK tournament. And the story ends with Liu Kang telling Kung Lao that he will treat him to prepare for the MK bullshit that's on its way. And that is where we're at with the Mortal Kombat timeline. 
until they decide to make another game in the future. Honestly, I feel like the Aftermath DLC left the Mortal Kombat storyline in a really good place. Like when they make MK12 or whatever they call it, they could finally go into what happened in the original Mortal Kombat tournament that Earthrealm first participated in, the one with the Great Kung Lao. I don't know about y'all, but I'd be super down for that. Like we can get to all the background MK lore that we don't know about. Like who exactly are the Elder Gods? What exactly is this one being? All that cool stuff. So if you'd be down for that, let me know in the comments. If not, tell me what you're looking for in the next Mortal Kombat. I don't know what it's gonna be. Honestly, they can just go into the future and talk about something completely different, or they can go into some random side story that we never talked about. So yeah, this is what I want. I much rather have a Kung Lao story, but if we're not gonna have that, let me know what you guys want in the comments. So now with the main storyline done, I could use this as a base to make all these other characters make sense for you guys and for me, honestly. So with that being said, end screen. Now, before I get into my whole end screen spiel, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about what's going on in the country today. So if you didn't already know, which you should, because why wouldn't you? The country is currently out of control because of just the pure and blatant racism going on in society. All this sparked obviously by the murders, not just deaths, murders of innocent black men caused by cops, the people that are supposed to be protecting us. I just wanna say, this is not a situation that we can just like let go like we always do. Like I notice all the time whenever something like this happens, it goes in the news, it gets talked about for like a week and then we forget about it. No, 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 no. We have to continue talking about this. We have to continue speaking out about this and we need to unify in order to stop all these dumbass injustices because if we don't, then it's gonna keep on happening over and over and over again. And then years like this are gonna repeat and we do not want that. So honestly, right now, I just wanna do my best efforts to support my people and support the Black Lives Matter movement and support everyone out there that's fighting for our right to just live in this country. Cause it's all we wanna do. We just want to live and we're not even getting that. So to help support, because I know not every one of you can go out there and protest the Corona still a thing. And also these protests are getting crazy. So I know a lot of you are like scared, scared for your protection. So I wanna give you guys a way to still help out from your homes. To help with that, in the description below, I put a link to the Black Lives Matter movement fund. Now I'm not forcing anyone to do this or anything like that, but I'm just saying if you have funds and you were gonna use those funds to donate to me, don't do that. Donate to the Black Lives Matter movement fund instead because I feel like that putting support in that is way more important now than put, than giving money to little old me, you know? So check out that link and don't forget, if you cannot donate, you can still help. Sharing posts about this protest, positive posts by the way, not negative posts about riots and all that shit that's not helping us whatsoever. You can also educate yourself on black history with documentaries on Netflix, books out there. There's a bunch of stuff out there to teach you about what is really happening so you know exactly why we're pissed about all this. This is not some random thing where, you know, somebody died and we got mad. No, 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 no. This is like, this is over. 200 years in the making people this this is 200 plus years of injustices racism taking away of of, of your rights like it's just not fair it's not fair so educate yourself people because i feel like a lot of people have opinions on this but they don't know exactly why it's so important they think it's just something simple but it's not this has been going on for a long time and we need to discuss this and stop it we need to end this right now and you can use that knowledge to teach other people that may not know about this stuff because I get it. The school system didn't teach everything about slavery and black history and all that stuff. There is still so much more that we need to know, not only because knowledge is power, but just, just to know about the history of this shit. It's important. And definitely don't just follow me. There are so many other brilliant black minds out there who are talking about so much stuff regarding this subject. And I feel like you guys should really just like take the time to listen to them. There are people on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, all that shit. So check out these people, check out their pages. I think it's worth listening to them and just see what they gotta say. You'll learn something new, I guarantee it. And that's pretty much all I want to say. So thank you guys for watching the video. Don't forget to like if you enjoyed it and comment who else you want to see me cover in future episodes of Honest Gaming History. Shout out to the Black Bob Ross, FNH Paul, Isaiah Mendez, and all my other dope patrons who make videos as possible with their very kind donations. And if you'd like to see more of me, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification button so that you get updated whenever I upload new videos. So with all that being said, I'm off this. As usual, be easy, stay lit, Black Lives Matter, stay healthy, and don't forget, you can do whatever the fuck you put your mind to. All it takes is practice and time. Peace out, y'all.